All right, ladies and gents, the Macho Man knows that you guys want to see the Macho Slayer Path. And so, I've come this morning to fulfill that request and explain my Slayer Path to you guys as best as I can. So if you're ready to rise to be the cream of the crop, then stay tuned for this explanation because we're going to go through it right the hell now. All right. Stick with me, folks. The macho man's gonna educate you. Okay, so we're back here now, and, uh, you know, back in macho nerd mode. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, like, each of the notes, and I'll, like, explain um, the stuff there. So, number one, Shattered Isles. Your journey as a slayer begins. Learn to hunt, slay, and survive. Basically, you'll be unlocking the Training Island and the Emberthorn Cave, which is your first place to start getting shit. So your Ember Main stuff is probably going to be the first thing you craft in the game. Um, basically, that's how everyone starts out. Then, weaponsmithing, you know. Um, as you build weapons, you, you just have to slowly unlock this. If I recall, you unlock this with combat merits. Um... Unfortunately, this was all unlocked for me already when I literally first started out with the game. Now, there's something very interesting to point out here, <coughs> which I completely forgot about, um, and I and I didn't mention it in previous um, previous videos because I totally forgot about it. If you look at the Slayer nodes here under Hunter Crafter, um, as you improve with each of these weapons, let's say you improve with the Aether Strikers, you actually get a baseline of two percent critical chance. This plus one percent, plus one percent. So no matter what, you always have like let's say even if you just use discipline with no other cells, you have a nine point five percent baseline crit rate thanks to the plus two here, um, which is very interesting to note because yeah, having that having that extra plus two is actually helpful because a baseline of crit rate of ten is very very nice actually, um, and a baseline of nineteen point five, which is close to twenty, is very good with cunning and. Uh, and uh, discipline so actually things um, are better than expected crit wise and of course you get power as well so um, as you master weapons this is this is what you'll unlock with combat merits if i'm not wrong um, okay you also be unlocking the boreal outpost and um you know the revelation rock so a lot of these are are basic behemoths all lesser the only real behemoths are the nasher and boreas again boreas being an ice type uh, is one of the first elemental ice weapons that you'll start crafting. Um, the Boreas is pretty good. Excuse me. You're going to have to put up with my allergies. So anyone that doesn't like that, I apologize. Um, okay, so with the Boreas, um, please note that it is a fairly strong weapon, ice-wise. This is one of your mainstay weapons, in fact. Um, I had previously thought of the Boreas as nothing much but I'm gonna tell you right now in this video pay attention that the Boreas is great for the sword the axe the chain blades absolutely 110% the chain blades and uh, that's about that I should double check on the spear give me one second let me let me double check on the spear as well Okay, hi. Yeah, um, I just double-checked, and yeah, the Boreas is also great for the spear. Uh, in fact, the spear is one of the strongest ones with Boreas um, because the continuous six seconds of generating the Frostbrites. I actually measured how strong the Frostbrites are, and uh, yeah, they're quite amazing. So um, Boreas is actually one of, the, one of the things you should focus on. In fact, it's something I'm going to be focusing on over the next few days because I never thought about it much, and I can admit to my mistake. I can literally admit to my mistake. So... Um, yeah, to, to those who may have uh, also been informed that the Boreas is not that good, um, I am letting you know now that I'm changing my stance. The Boreas will actually be my main ice thing for most weapons, other than the hammer. For the hammer, no good. NG. Um, repeaters, I mean, repeaters, you'd you be using whichever prism suits you, so there's better choices because you're, it's interchangeable. Uh, for the war pike, for the chain blades, for the sword, axe, um, these are 100%. Boris. The reason because axe charge up. Your charge up generates the frost sprites. And you can charge do charge attacks quite often. 
if you're if you're smart enough with uh, how you play, and that ups your damage quite a bit. Um, with the strikers, okay, the strikers have a bit of a problem because they need to surge in order to gain the frost sprite, so not so good. Um, but this one, maybe I'll find a play style for it in the future. I, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, for now, remember that the Boreas is important. Your lesser Embermain is also important. So after all that, you'll start crafting some armor. All right, you'll unlock Moira. Armor crafting, all that, you know, the rest of Sands, Iron Falls. You'll unlock your basic glider as well, okay? So you can, you can slowly get the lightweight glider all this kind of thing now all this unlocked for me as soon as the glider came so I, unfortunately i wasn't able i wouldn't be able to remember or explain how to you know do this with you but what is important is here you want to unlock this see with the helmsmithing and i think it's also combat merits that you use to unlock this you get a baseline plus five percent healing received from all sources really useful that means that a tough cell plus three is actually giving you baseline plus 20% because of this plus 5% from this plus 15% from them. This is very useful. Next, health increase. This is how you get to your 1,100 uh, 1, hit points. All right, don't skimp on this. Maximum stamina regeneration. Yeah, don't skimp on this shit. And the stamina bonus as well. Don't skimp on that. Very useful for managing your stamina. So, you know, focus on this part of the tree as well. Um, next will be loadout slots. You can unlock them as you go along. More islands. Charog, Embermane, Drask, Ragetail, Nasher, Shrike, all this. Um, none of these creatures are very important other than the Skarn. Skarn here, very important. Why? Skarn weapons are amazing. You'll be using them a lot. Um, Drask weapons also amazing for Malkyrion bonds, so you can use that. So that's what's important here, Skarn and the Drask, more or less. And, of course, more Boreas. Um, now, when it comes to these potions, um, you'll see that I've half done these. And I could unlock more, but I don't really use Bulwark and Stamina Tonics. I, I had uh, raised them previously. What is most important is unlocking your consumable slots, so you have your uh, four consumables ready for trials, um, and this one. You want to make sure that you max this out because more healing and more healing flasks. Up to 25% more healing and up to three more healing flasks. Okay, this will keep you alive. Potions, very important. Next, light the way. Lanterns. You want all of them. Why? Because they're just useful. You never know which build might use which lantern. So, um, I mean, I mostly favor the Pangar. Okay, don't get me wrong. I mostly favor Pangar, Shrike, and Embermain, but, you know, there are uses for others. Drask is also uh, used sometimes, you know, so don't hesitate on these. All right. Then you will also be unlocking the weapon mods and specials. All right. These are very important. Now, I unlocked this automatically because back then I had mastered every weapon to, to like, the point that I unlocked all of these, so... Um, these used to be unlocked by mastering the weapons. That means going through challenges with weapons, things like that, just playing with the weapons. And we played so goddamn much after getting tier 3 that, yeah, I unlocked all this shit. So you get your extra weapon mods. This is where you get your, like, um, capacitive magazine, scope sights, lucky magazine, um, your serrated blades, everything. All unlocked here. Very fucking important. If you do not um, see a mod here, it will be in the trial store. So that is where you want to go. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Like I said, morning allergies, but I still got to do this. All right, trial store if you do not see a mod here. Okay. I know, chicken rice. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Mom's asking me for lunch. Um, Okay, so Frost March. When you unlock this one along with the lanterns, all right. Dread Frost Boreas, Pangar, these are two key creatures. The rest, nobody cares. Did I quill shot? Eh, niche builds for the uh, spear. But your Boreas, very important because that's how you're going to upgrade your shit to Power Surgeon. And um, yeah, Pangar because 
well, Pangar stuff is, is useful for like the hammer, etc., etc. All right. After that, you come to element elemental mastery. All right. Here's where you unlock your normal escalations. Great for leveling up in future. You'll be unlocking some more cool islands. Um, Kabarak. Mark my words. Kabarak stuff. Don't sleep on it. Although it's not really useful now, I think in the coming coming days. Let's just say, don't sleep on the Cabrac stuff, okay? Um, and here you will have your Drask. The higher level Drask stuff, usually useful. Frostback Pangar also very useful. Um, now, this part is where you will start upgrading your potions using exploration merits for trials. I haven't really finished upgrading these, but namely, I use Blitz Tonic, Assault Tonic, and Frenzy Tonic. Aether Drive Tonic, also highly worth upgrading for those that um, take on the role of bufferers or things like that. Um, all of these, very fucking important. You should definitely upgrade all these, okay? Um, why? Because you can carry more during the, during the trials. You can have a 25% chance to craft additional tonics when you do craft. And um, the effect, the most important thing is the duration increase, the effect increase, and yeah, these two are indispensable. Okay, so make sure you get these. They're very useful. Next, Dread Cells. Okay. This is where you will unlock the most important man you will ever know. The middleman. Without him, you don't have your plus three cells because you cannot fuse and combine cells. You also unlock some very important stuff here, namely. Wait, is this where you? Yeah, the Volomir. <coughs> the first of your radiant behemoths. Okay, you'll be unlocking Brightwood, the first ever area where you'll also be dealing with um, primal and elder behemoths. So Volomir is your go-to dude. Um, your Rage Tail Nasher, I guess, which you've also unlocked previously, would start to become important here because you might want to power surge your, na your Nasher gear. So, yeah, Rage Tail Nasher is the thing. Um, most of the others I don't really use, but, you know. Now, what is really important here is this. Elemental Resistance Upgrades. Upgraded with Combat Merits. Okay gives you up to 25 per, uh, plus 25 resistance to each element. So it might take a while to upgrade you through, but this improves your defenses heavily. All right, so you want to max this entire thing out, that's for sure. Now, come up here again. Slayer Science. Okay. This is where things get cool. Literally. You'll be unlocking Cold Runner Key with Scrave, Frostback Pangar, um, and over here is where you get the Rift Stalker. Very important for Thrax builds, all right? So this is another important behemoth right here. That's going to be awesome. Um, other than that, nothing, nothing else that's, that's really cool or that is really used a lot. Um, yeah, nobody cares about Shrike and all that. Scrape, scrape stuff, nobody really gives a shit, but you can, you can craft it if you want. I mean, I, I have never power searched a single piece of scrape gear in my whole life. Mostly because I don't need nimble nimble stuff, and their effects aren't that great in comparison to Boreas and Pangar, which really outshine them. Um, here you can unlock pylon crafting. These are useful in teams, but again, I rarely ever use much other than the cleansing pylon, which I unlocked uh, primarily for uh, the frost escalations. In the early stages of the frost escalation, this is your saving grace. The cleansing pylons are very important for the frost escalation until you get a handle on it or until you get a good team going and this is to stave off the frostbite um mechanic now you'll be unlocking undervolved defile here and this is where things get important like i said don't sleep on the cabarack stuff and rift stalker still useful okay this doesn't have a i don't think there's a heroic form so this is just important to you ko shy very important for lord knows how many of my builds Build your Koshai stuff. Mostly the armor, all right, but the weapon is good for the axe. I don't really use any other Koshai weapon for Terra, 
uh, mostly because Skarn would be a better choice, or Kabarak in future. Like I said, don't sleep on it. Kabarak is the offensive thing. It might be more useful with Bastion coming out in future. Right now, it's overshadowed by Skarn because you literally would not use anything else with Terra because um, there's no other way of gaining shields. We're going to see how that is going to be worked uh, in the future, so don't sleep on the Kabarak stuff. Koshai, though, important for your armor. Trust me. Now here, gathering upgrades. This is useful, okay? Straight up, straight off the bat, okay? Um, me, I don't really use the ore stuff because that's mostly for grenades. It's only occasionally if I need to complete a quest. But all this herbalist stuff is your number one, please, dear God. 25% chance to gather double herbs. Yes, please. Mushrooms are your friend. Gather all the mushrooms. Why? Because they're needed for every potion type. The other leaves and stuff, you know, they're, they're, they're here and there. You might need them for one particular potion, but the mushrooms are the base for every potion. So mushrooms are your friend. Gather all your mushrooms, please. Okay, you, otherwise you will never have enough potions for trials. You want to have 500 potions in stock for trials. Okay, um, Ram's also useful for doing that stuff. Ow, my hand. Um, but yes, gathering herbs double. Yes, please. Okay. Now you see I really half-assed uh, this tree. And the reason why is because I didn't actually spend on anything here. Um, I just unlocked occasionally one or two pieces or they were already unlocked when I when I first got this I don't ever use grenades so apparently there's a transfusion grenade um, but yeah I, I don't bother with this at all okay grenades are not used in any sort of way shape or form for me they're quite useless um, but other good stuff is unlocked here number one here oh heroic rift stalker yes dread frost boreas yes for your boreas equipment uh, storm claw for the sword mostly um, other than that, Hellion and the Heroic Volomir. Heroic Volomir, nobody really cares about either. Um, but Razorwing Cabarac, Rockfall Scarn, all useful. Hellion, Hellion stuff, useful. Shadow Touch, Koshai, eh, nobody really cares about him. But he's useful for getting Koshai stuff anyway. And also for getting a sick helmet, which I think you can still get. Or I can't remember if you can or cannot. What was it for an event? I don't know, I left a lot of the rumor quests there because I just couldn't be arsed doing them. Um, but yes, he is a thing. Okay, next. Testament of skill. You are, This is where you unlock your trials. Before you even think about doing Dauntless trials, do your normal trials every week. Please, dear God, please do your normal trials. You also have to unlock your Dauntless trials in the Slayer Path here. So it's not just doing the quest. Make sure you unlock your Dauntless trials here. But the key thing about normal trials is that you can start to get your Lady Luck rewards. This is your Discipline, this is your, um, and in future the Discipline Omni Cell, this is going to be your extra mods, which are used on some weapons. Very, very useful, right here. Okay, this is what you want. And the Paradox Breaks. Okay, these, this is also uh, super important. Um, not just for your Time Weave Armor, but Rezakiri. Flameborn Resikiri. Uh, I mean, Flameborn Resikiri doesn't have any special gear, but with two types of Resikiri on the map, you can get Resikiri stuff faster. And Resikiri stuff is used in a lot of builds. Um, again, Heroic Koshai, Frostback Pangar, these are all useful. Nobody really cares about the Embermane variants. Um, the Winterhorn's Grave, also a useful dude. I mean, occasionally he exists, which is good. But Twilight Sanctuary, this is important for you. Scorchstone Hellion to max out your Hellion gear. Tempestborn Stormclaw for those for those niche things. Shroud. Your big honk and tonkin bird of death. Shroud. As well as your tragic echo helm and your hunger, everything. Shroud. This is your boy. This is your boy. You can also encounter him in heroic es uh sorry, in uh, hard escalations, which is unlocked here. And that is actually where I got most of my Shroud stuff. I didn't actually bother going here. Uh, Scorchstone Hellion, Tempestborn Stormclaw, I actually also unlocked mostly through the um, Hard Escalations because the more you do these anyway, the more you encounter these random types and you can actually unlock a lot of the materials that way rather than specifically hunting these down in the hunting grounds. Just so you know, that's actually how I got most of my stuff. All right, and then the most important thing is Reforge. When you start being able to Reforge, what is your priority? We've talked about that in a separate video, but also XP. XP, please, dear God. I know this has been going on for 20 fucking minutes, but please uh, forgive me for being so long-winded. XP, please, this thing, okay? 
max this out because when you increase your weapon skill XP from killing behemoths, 15% is humongous. That is being able to level up 15% faster. This is your priority right here. Max this out first before anything else. Then you worry about the rest, okay? And that covers the entirety of the Slayer Path as requested. I hope this helps you guys out with your journey in understanding what's important, where, where things are, and uh, what to prioritize. All right, I'm sorry that it went on for 20 minutes. Um, like I said, the full explanation was important to me. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you on the next one. Okay, the people's champ. We'll go film more videos now. All right, don't forget, you want to support me, you want to support me. One of the best ways is to like, share, and subscribe. Other than that, you can always drop a tip if you feel like it. My chat was so nice to me yesterday on Twitch. They were like, you know, I was thinking, well, I've already got the keyboard mouse. I really shouldn't be asking for anything else, but... We've set the next goal together as the microphone, as a microphone upgrade. So, if you want to drop a tip, support your boy, make his content come faster, give him upgrades, use the link in the description of the video. And before we go, ooh yeah, the Macho Man is back. Remember, on July 8th at Omnimania, we are going to have an all-night-long blast. We are going to go hard in the paint, not only for the noon, not only for the new Omnicells, new builds, new everything is coming at Omnimania. So don't miss out, and we'll see you there. People's Champ! out.